everybody, thanks for joining us and welcome to the 19th episode of Fight Like the Movies, the tutorial series where we study cinema's most epic fight scenes and a point we discover to develop a deeper understanding of film combat. I'm your instructor TJ Sensula and this week's lesson, The Karate Kid. The original version released in 1984 with a remake in 2010 with respective directors John G. Avildsen and Harold Zwart. Pat E. Johnson is responsible for the martial arts choreography in the original with stunt coordinator Gong Wu for the remake. Time to forward roll it! The Karate Kid holds a special place in the hearts of the young people who saw it at the time of its release. Danielson epitomizes the underdog. It's very easy to identify with the kid who just doesn't fit in, who's bullied by the tough crowd and doesn't have a means to defend himself. Enter Mr. Miyagi, who almost single-handedly popularized martial arts as a mainstream sport and recreational activity for American kids. The filmmakers repeatedly emphasize the theme of martial arts as a means of building confidence and self-defense and frequently condemn its use for harming others or perpetuating violence outside of appropriate and controlled settings. But it also reinforces a very common and quite true assertion that martial arts is super cool! Karate is a discipline with heavy emphasis on striking, mainly with punches and kicks, but also incorporates grappling to a limited extent. As an extension of fighting style, the primary focus is defeating your opponent at a distance. The central event of the Karate Kid movie is a karate championship tournament in which competitors are bound by the rules of competition. Different organizations have variations on scoring objectives and how to actually win a match. For example, a punch to the face may result in a warning or disqualification, however a kick to the face is a perfectly legitimate way to score. In fact, in some martial arts competitions like Olympic style Taekwondo, so extra points are awarded for kick into the head or incorporating a spin into the attack. The choreography follows a very realistic framework of what one might actually see at a karate tournament. As a character driven experience, Karate Kid carves out a clear delineation between the patient teacher who strives to inspire the best of his pupil and that of a cruel ego driven instructor who manipulates his students into emulating his cruel behavior. In organized competitive settings, rules were made to be followed and bullies were made to break them. This serves to further emphasize the divide between fighting in the spirit of healthy competition and fighting to win at any cost. It's always a risky venture to remake a film with such heavy nostalgic value, but there are some timeless stories that deserve to be retold. The Karate Kid remake certainly adopts the same storyline and thematic elements, however offers a completely new experience in many respects, perhaps most notably by heightening the Karate Kid's isolation by relocating him in a completely foreign country, and even more notably by not featuring karate at all. While it might be more accurate to dub the hero the Kung Fu Kid, what's in a name? An awesome martial arts movie by any other name would still kick ass. Audience expectations have changed a lot since the release of the original film, and the remake is tailored to the taste of a more contemporary crowd. The believability of Jaden Smith's portrayal of a young martial artist is undeniable, and the credibility of Jackie Chan as his martial arts master is unquestionable. Surrounded by a cast of top-notch martial arts and stunt people, this update holds nothing back and sweeps the leg of every audience member knocking them off their feet by utilizing every tool in the Hollywood action genre toolbox. Dynamic, fast-paced choreography, frenetic camera movement, wire work, digital effects, hard-hitting foley, and a solid cast of young martial arts products. Strategies. The modern update doesn't attempt to fix a formula that isn't broken. It pays homage to the original in many ways, but deserves to be remembered as more than just a tribute to an iconic film. The Karate Kid has left an enduring impression on our pop culture. The crane pose used to win the tournament is a position that is so ingrained in our collective conscious that even people who have never seen the film will recognize it as the quintessential martial arts movie move. Let's meet the class. Who doesn't love a little martial arts action? So for the class today, we wanted to create a fight scene that embodied the spirit of the Karate Kid, hand to hand, using some punches and some kicks. The classic film uses Japanese karate, and the remake uses a style of Chinese kung fu. Since everyone in the class today has a very different martial arts background, we're using techniques that would be applicable to just about any martial art you could do for cinematic purposes. Martial arts legend Bruce Lee described how when you're striking a target, you don't actually intend to hit the target itself you need to strike several inches behind the target so that the energy can pass through and actually inflict some damage. In some ways, we modified this almost exactly for film purposes, where instead of going through your target, you go to your target, which prevents the energy from destroying that guy. So in real life, if you want to destroy the competition with a kick, the energy needs to pass through their body. For example, if you're going to do a roundhouse, I'm going to let my knee pass the plane of their body so that when I snap the kick, it's going through them, cutting them in half. When you're doing it for a movie, it's a little bit different because you want the energy to end before it reaches your target. So I use my knee as the gauge. 
If my leg is straight here and my target is right here, I know that my foot is never going to break that plane. It's gonna stop right before it reaches the other guy. It also creates a really dynamic visual because you wanna reach the point of full extension where your leg looks the most dynamic in the course of an attack. If you've seen any of the other episodes, then you know that we talk a lot about timing and tempo. You want it to seem like it's unfolding spontaneously right before the eyes of your viewing public. So we have three different ranges. We've got our very close range, we have our medium range, and we've got our long range attack. As we transition between these distances, it really demands a lot of the performer to make sure that they're moving and also becoming aware of where the camera's placed for your different hits. If you're trying to make contact with the other guy, but you're not in the correct position with the camera, it's no good. So you really start to get a sense of all the different things that a stunt performer needs to keep in mind while they're performing these scenes. You gotta make sure that you're not hitting your partner for real. You have to make sure that you're selling it for camera, which means you need to be aware of where the camera is in the space, and you also need to look super cool. Looking cool? Check. Yeah! Around. All right, I did it. Can you believe it? I'm gonna be in the finals. But it's 
Is that my opponent? I, I can't fight her, she's tiny! A and the girl! Fight, fight. Same, same. But... Focus. All right. Okay, I want to do this, but here I come. Focus. Need more focus. As I hope you can tell, I had a ton of fun doing this episode. I love throwing down with my friends from Ultimate Taekwondo. Special thanks to Taylor Jeffers, Adam Khan, Yedin Kwan, and Young Jae Kwan. I also want to issue a special thanks to Master Lee and the entire Ultimate Taekwondo family for providing Burbank, California with the best martial arts has to offer. Go check them out. And of course, I can't say enough about my amazing wife. She's totally fearless, has an incredible sense of humor, and best of all, she puts up with me. And that is a wrap. Thanks for watching this episode of Fight Like the Movies. Go ahead and punch that like button as hard as you can. Just smack it. Follow that up with the ultimate combo. Roundhouse, kick that subscribe button. And then send it to all your friends like a match-winning crane kick. You can also follow us on Kick to the Facebook. We can interact with the class, see behind-the-scenes videos, make suggestions for future episodes, and stay up to date with the schedule. And if you want to sweep that social media leg, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Warrior Showdown. If you're wondering if we look this good in person, Come check us out at Swordplay Studios in Burbank, California, 8.30 to 10 p.m. every Wednesday night. All skill levels are welcome, and the only thing that's missing is you. And cut. <laughs>